because that always takes a minute. That doesn't just pop up like it should. Okay, here we go. PET here, Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Um, let's jump on in. I want to say a word of prayer and then we'll get started. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for staying with us during this time, oh God. Thank you for your mercy, even in the midst of everything that's going on. I ask you to breathe through me, live through me, speak to my mouth, oh God. Let everything be said, be done to your honor and your glory, and let it be done according to your word and your spirit, that you might be glorified in all things and that the saints might receive the word you want them to hear from my mouth. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's <clears throat> prophetic word is miss me. Again, today's prophetic word is miss me. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I, of course, will tell you. We're going to take a look at Psalm 91, but we're going to take a fresh look at Psalm 91. And uh, the reason that's important is because uh, I've discovered a lot of people have been misquoting and misappropriating this scripture and also because we want to to understand it correctly and quote it correctly and stand against the enemy correctly uh, through this scripture we don't want to just be making stuff up okay so we're going to look at Psalm 91 I'm going to read out of the King James Version we're going to look a little bit behind the language uh, and then we'll go from there okay so we're going to look at Psalm 91 and we're going to start at verse 1 and we're going to read down through maybe 12 or 13. Okay? All right, here we go. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at <clears throat> thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. That's verses 1 through 8. Okay, so what I want to start out by saying is you have to pay careful attention to the language to the language okay the verse uh, first verse verse 1 Psalm 91 1 says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty he who dwells in Hebrew the word is Yoshev it says to sit down to dwell to remain to settle and to marry one more time that word uh, there he who dwells in English in Hebrew means to sit down, to dwell, to remain, to settle, to marry. Now, why is that significant? Oh, hey, greetings from Cape Town. Good to see you. Why is that significant? It's significant because when you want to claim and stand on the word of God, you have to say what God says. You can't say what you think he said. And you can't say what somebody taught you. You have to know what the word actually says. And so when it starts off by saying, he that dwells, I will repeat what that means in Hebrew. That means to sit down, to dwell, to remain, to settle, to marry. Okay? <clears throat> he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. What does that word mean in Hebrew? Will abide. Uh, yitlonan, it means to stop to stay permanently, to be obstinate. So in other words, not only are you dwelling, remaining, settling, and married to the Lord, but you're permanently with him and you're obstinate, you're stubborn, you're determined and committed to stay with God, okay? It says that people that do that, <laughs> people that sit down, dwell, remain, settle, and marry God, dwell in the shelter of the Most High, will abide. They stop, they stay permanently, they're obstinately, they're stubbornly there. It says, those are the people that rest under the shadow of the Almighty. 
So right off the bat, you can see now why how when some people try to claim Psalm 91, but they haven't done what the first verse says, you can see now why how sometimes the promises don't kick in because you don't qualify. It says you got to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. And I showed you several times what dwell means in Hebrew. And it says you will abide. And I just showed you what that meant in the shadow of the Almighty. So in other words, this verse is not talking about like a fly by night relationship with God. This verse is not talking about uh, 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 seeing me, people that come to church on Christmas, Mother's Day and Easter. This verse is not talking about people that have a, a sometime in relationship with God. That is not what this means. So I keep trying to explain to people that there's different levels of faith. There's different levels in God's kingdom to get born again, to get into God's kingdom. You must accept him as savior. That's as simple as ABC. Admit, believe, confess. Admit you're a sinner. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the Son of God, died on the cross for your sins, rose the third day, and confess that with your mouth. That's how you get in the kingdom. But to matriculate in the kingdom, to grow in the kingdom, to be blessed in the kingdom, to become all that God wants you to be, you have to accept him as Lord. So you have to let go of the controls of your life, that's Romans 12, 1 and 2, and turn the controls over to Jesus, to the will of God. And that is HBO. Hear, believe, and obey. Hear what the Lord is saying and believe that what he's saying is true and that it's in your best interest because he loves you and then do it. Okay? So this verse is making it clear that if we want to tap into all these Psalm 91 blessings that we love to claim, okay, that there's some things we have to do. We have to dwell in his shelter. So we can abide, stay there, marry, be permanent. That means be faithful to God because God shows up in your bedroom every day looking for your morning fellowship. Every day the Lord is there. Every day you wake up, God is there to have fellowship with you. Do you have that daily quiet time with him? Do you spend time with the Lord? And then when you go about your business, doing your daily routine, are you trying to honor God in all that you do? See what I mean? That's what it means to dwell. And that's what it means to abide with God, that not only am I spending time with him every day, but I'm trying to structure my decisions in life according to what he says, or as the scripture says, order my steps. So again, I will repeat. Now you can see why some people have been trying to claim these promises, but it hasn't been working because you don't qualify. This is for people that do what the Lord says. I will say to the Lord, you are my refuge or my shelter and my fortress. Okay, you know what a fortress is. It means a net capture, a fastness in Hebrew. My God in whom I trust. There it is in Hebrew. To trust, be confident and sure. So there it is again. So I'm trusting in God. I'm confident in God and I'm sure of God. Well, if I'm trusting in him, that means I'm obeying him. It doesn't mean that I'm just doing what I want to do. If I'm just doing what I want to do, I'm actually not trusting him. I'm just doing what I want to do. You understand? Okay. Then, after verses 1 and 2, verse 3 kicks in. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. Okay, but why and how does God deliver you from the snare and the fowler and from the noise and pestilence? It's because we've been dwelling in the secret place. We've been living, we've been remaining, we've been abiding. We've been married to Jesus. Okay, and we have been obstinately holding on to our position with him under his shadow. That's how you get, de get delivered from the snare of the fowler. So let me give an example of somebody that did do that. Somebody in the Bible that didn't do that was Samson. The Lord told Samson not to drink wine or strong drink, and the Lord told Samson not to cut his hair. Both of those things were the sign of the covenant that Samson had being a Nazarite from the womb, that he was chosen by God before he was born to judge uh, Israel and to bring judgments against Israel's enemy, mainly the Philistines. But what did Samson do? Samson kept falling in love with Gentile women because one of the things that the Lord kept telling Israel was don't intermingle with Gentile women. But Samson kept going after non-Jewish women and having relationships with them. And then he ran up on Delilah. Delilah was a plant. Delilah was somebody that the Philistines hired to seduce him to find out the secret of his strength. But God told Samson not to fool with the Philistine women, not to fool with the Gentile women. And God told Samson not to cut his hair. 
because that was the sign of the covenant he had with Yahweh, with Jehovah, the God of Israel. But Samson listened to Delilah, and she pushed him and pushed him and pressed him and pressed him and pressed him until uh, he finally told her the truth about where the secret of, 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 was of his great strength. So while he was asleep, she cut his hair. And then she called the Philistines and said, the Philistines are on you, Samson. And Samson thought he was just going to shake himself. He's just going to flex. And that Holy Ghost super strength is going to come flooding in, but it didn't happen. Why? Because he cut his hair. He broke his covenant. He didn't abide with God. That's the point I'm trying to make. He didn't abide. He didn't stay with the Lord. He didn't stubbornly cling to what God told him to do. He forsook his covenant with God, listening to Delilah. And what happened to him after that? He got arrested. He got beaten. They actually blinded Samson and put his eyes out. And then they chained him between uh, two poles in one of their coliseums just to make fun of him. And that's why so many Christians have ended up defeated before their enemies because you didn't stick with what the Lord told you to stick with. You see what I mean? That's how we get delivered from the snare of the fowler. <clears throat> Samson and Delilah is one of the most famous stories in the Bible. Samson could have avoided that whole situation if he had actually learned how to abide with God. But he didn't listen to what God was saying and got off track. And that's what happened to him. Okay? So, again, I will repeat uh, yet one more time that that's why a lot of Christians, a lot of believers trying to claim these verses, haven't done the two qualifying verses, which is verses 1 and 2. Dwelling in a secret place, abiding under the shadow, uh, making God your refuge, and trusting Him. That means you're doing what He says and not what you want. Then, the deliverance comes, and from the noise and pestilence. Okay? So that means in a very real way, if God tells you don't go out today, then don't go out. If you're driving and God tells you don't go down that street, then don't go down that street. If you're doing anything and the Holy Ghost interrupts you and says stop doing this and do that, or don't do this, or leave that alone, you have to obey that voice. You have to obey the gentle leading of the Spirit. You have to do what the Holy Ghost is telling you to do. That's what it means. And if you're just off doing what you want to do, then that's how you end up opening yourself up for possible sin and defeat from the enemy. Then it says, uh, he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. There's that word again. Let's look at that in Hebrew. That's verse 4. Verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will find refuge. Uh, his faithfulness is a shield and a rampart or a protection or trust. So is a shield, a hook, a shield. That word there uh, that says trust, in some versions it's rendered buckler, which means armor. And in some versions it's rendered in English rampart. What it means in Hebrew is something surrounding the person. So it's more of a 360 degree shield instead of like, you know, we think of a Roman shield or a gladiator shield or a Captain America shield when we think of shield. But that word there says something that's surrounding the person. So it's actually more like a bubble, more like a 360 thing. That's what that word there, uh, when it talks about shield and buckler or armor or protection or rampart, that's what that means. So it says that his faithfulness, the fact that God has faithful promises, the fact that all, God always shows up, the fact that God always does what he says he's going to do is the thing that surrounds you and protects you, okay? That means you have to stay in it. <laughs> you have to stay in that bubble. You have to stay in that shield. So like I said, in a very practical sense, that means if the Lord is telling you to do something, you have to go ahead on and do it. If the Lord is telling you to stop doing something, you have to stop doing it. If the Lord is telling you to turn left here, turn right here, if the Lord is telling you to stop altogether, don't proceed, don't leave the house today or go down this street or I've, you know, prayed to the Lord and asked him about, you know, drives home sometimes from church. You know, when there's a lot of uh, construction, I'm like, which way should I go? You know, coming home from church and the Holy Ghost will lead, will lead you even on small details like that. Okay. Haven't you ever been in a situation where you've been driving and you said, you know, something told me not to come down here, but I ignored it. Because you knew inside of your spirit that you should have listened to that voice telling you what to do. That's what it's talking about 
is that there's a 360 degree shield around us because of his faithfulness but that means that we have to stay in it through obedience <laughs> because too many of us too many believers have been deceived by the idea that you can just do whatever you want to do and get get God's full benefits but that's not what the scripture says okay all right then it says okay then it says <clears throat> Not to, we are, we are not going to be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand in my right hand, but it shall not come near us. So I want to repeat that if you want to claim that promise, and you want to claim that scripture, you got to qualify by doing what the first two verses tell you what to do. And in verse 2 and verse 4, okay, it speaks of trusting. So now let's assume, moving forward, that we are doing that. Let's assume that we are being obedient. What the Holy Ghost wanted me to tell people was that it's time for us to start telling the devil to miss us. You know how we have that phrase, miss me with that? It's time for us, for, for believers, to start telling the devil to miss me with some stuff. Because if you are dwelling in the secret place and you're married to Jesus and you're abiding with the Lord and you're obeying God and you're, you're letting God's faithfulness be your 360 degree shield, then it's time to understand that we can claim these promises in Psalm 91. Okay? Let's look at verse 5. It says, you will not fear. That word in Hebrew, fear, tira, means to fear, revere, cause, or be frightened. The terror of the night. That word terror means alarm. And night is obvious. It means a night, but it also means a twist or adversity. What does that mean? It means, doesn't just mean physical night when the sun sets or it gets dark. It says in Hebrew, that word layela, uh, Laila, la excuse me, Laila means a twist. In other words, something happened that you didn't count on because life can throw you a twist. It says night, but it also says adversity. That means when you're going through stuff, it says you're not going to be afraid. You're not going to be frightened if life throws you a twist or if life has you in adversity or if it's dark. Okay? Then it says, or the arrow that flies by day. Let's look in the Hebrew at that word arrow. Meshets, it means a piercer, an arrow, a wound, thunderbolt, the shaft of a spear. One more time. A piercer, an arrow, a wound, thunderbolt, the shaft of a spear. Wow. So that means all this stuff that the devil might be throwing at you. Something to pierce you, to cut through your armor, or shooting an arrow, or trying to wound you, or scaling you with thunderbolts. Because remember, the thunder is sound. Lightning is the actual bolt. Thunder is the sound. The shaft of a spear. If the enemy is throwing all that at you, the Bible says, you don't have to be afraid of any of that. Because God's faithfulness is your 360 degree shield if you're abiding in it. Okay? The arrow that flies to fly or to faint by day. Daytime by day. So that means if it's dark, if there's a twist, something you didn't count on, or if there's adversity, or if it's broad daylight, if the enemy's trying to attack you in broad daylight, let me give you a personal testimony, okay? One day, I was on my way to church, and I was on the highway, and if you drive on the highway on the regular, you know that people are used to going at ridiculously high speeds on the highway, so I was coming out of the turn past the loop, getting ready to go to... Uh, the south side lanes right in front of me as I was coming past the loop downtown a car had crashed into the wall but it was at an angle to where you couldn't see it until you got right up on it so I don't know what I was doing but I was easily doing 55 or 60 and the people behind me were easily at least doing that and then I came around the corner and I saw that car I didn't even have time to pray or shout Jesus I didn't have time to say anything because I turned the corner and there it was. And so you know what I did? I closed my eyes and I braced for impact. I didn't even have time to speak a word. 
and I saw a truck in my rear view mirror and I just knew that truck was going to hit me. So I closed my eyes and I just braced because I knew there was no way that truck was going to be able to stop in time as fast as it was going. And you know what happened? Not only did I stop and not hit that car, but that truck stopped behind me and didn't hit me. I was stunned. But again, I didn't even have time to say anything. But God's faithfulness protected me as a shield because I was in his will. I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And somehow the mighty hand of God stopped that truck and it didn't flip over and it didn't crash into me. And there is no natural way that happened. If you could have seen how close it was and how fast it was going, there is no natural way that was going to happen. Okay? So that's a living example of what I mean about uh, whether it's broad daylight or whatever. This is when this stuff kicks in. Now let's read this verse we've been claiming because of the pandemic. That would be verse 6. And verse 6 says in the King James Version, Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Okay? Well, what does that say in Hebrew? The Berean Study Bible says the plague that stalks in darkness or the calamity that destroys at noon. Uh, uh, many other versions say pestilence, disease, uh, disaster, and destruction. Okay? The plague. It talks about a pestilence, a pestilence. So we understand what that means. That's what we're dealing with now. Then it says it stalks in darkness. It says to go, come, or walk. That means that plague is walking around, walking around looking for people to infect. I know that's the truth. Then it says in darkness, darkness or gloom, or the calamity. That means destruction that destroys, to swell up, to devastate. Oh, that's what it means in Hebrew. Destruction is going to swell up and devastate. And then it says at noon. Okay, it says a light, a double light, or noon, right in the middle of the day. So it says that we're not going to be afraid of a plague that's walking around, even if it's stalking in the darkness trying to find someone to infect. And it says that even if that destruction is swelling up in the day, that we're not going to be afraid of that destruction, even if it tries to destroy at noon, right in you know the heat of the day, which is normally between noon and 2 p.m. is when it's hottest and brightest. So God is saying that even when it's hottest and brightest, you don't have to be afraid. That calamity that is looking for you, you don't have to be afraid of it. Okay? Then I want to close with this verse, uh, verse 7, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Let's look at that in Hebrew. It says, Though a thousand, and that word means a thousand, may fall at your side, okay, to fall or lie to uh, at your side, and ten thousand, that means a multitude, a myriad, ten thousand at your right hand, Okay, it means the right hand, the side, or the south. No harm, okay, will come near, near with, among, or to you. Okay, so again, the Spirit of God wanted me to help give you some insight about how you need to be sure you're qualified. But now that we know how to qualify, we can tell the devil to miss us. And so I want you to claim these verses. Claim Psalm 91, 1 through 7. And when the enemy is trying to bring anything in your life, claim that God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the noise and pestilence, that I'm covered with his feathers and under his wings I do trust. His truth is my shield and my armor. I'm not afraid for the terror by night, nor for the air that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walked in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes in, noon, in noonday, because I've done what the first two verses said. I'm married to Jesus. I live. I dwell. I abide. I stay there stubbornly and obstinately. I claim to the Lord. I'm determined to stay with Jesus. Thomas Whitfield had an old school song called, I'm encouraged to stay with Jesus. I'm encouraged to stay with the Lord. Okay? You understand? All right. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, let me put them on the screen right now. Any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Uh, when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost if there's any more prophetic words, financial words, financial healing, or, uh, or physical healing, or deliverance that needs to be released. So here we go.
Okay, the word I heard in my spirit, the word that came to me was change. The word that came to me was change. So praise God, a change is coming for somebody. There's somebody listening to me live or watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast or watching on replay. A change. Change is coming for somebody. And amen, because we could use a change because most of us are going a little bit stir crazy from, <laughs> from all the lockdown living we've been experiencing. All right. All right. Okay, I think that's it. Nothing more to release. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for those of you that watch me live. Thank you for those of you on Periscope, Periscope, Facebook, those of you on YouTube, those of you listening to the podcast. Amen. God bless. Remember that if we qualify, we can claim those promises this week. Uh, I will be on uh, May 14th for the next No More Genies. I will be on this Friday at noon for a new Music Friday release. And I will be on next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for uh, the next live prophetic word. All right? Amen and God bless. And remember to tell the devil this week and from now on, because you're abiding and married to Jesus, that the devil's going to miss you with his arrows and his spears, his thunderbolts, and his fear and his curses. Amen and God bless. <laughs>